In 2019, the Oculus Quest thrust virtual reality ahead with a simple, affordable option that provided the least cumbersome VR experience to date. A little over a year later, they've pushed that progress even further, making available the lighter, faster, sharper Oculus Quest 2 on October 13th. And they're doing so for $100 less than the original Quest. What makes the Quest so appealing is how little you need. For example, here's a look at a PlayStation VR setup. For this, you need the headset, which attaches to the console, and a separate tracking camera, along with the two handheld remotes. That's a lot of equipment to assemble and a lot to operate once you're in games, particularly with the wire tethers. Here's what you need for VR with a Quest 2. The headset, the hand controllers, and your smartphone. That's it. Between PSVR equipment and the base PS4 console, you're looking at a total purchase of over $600 based on current prices. Assuming you already own a smartphone with iOS 10 Plus or Android 5.0 or better, all you need to spend is $299 for a Quest 2, which is notably upgraded from the Quest 1. What most consumers need to know is that the Quest 2 is more powerful than its predecessor, with higher resolution graphics that will eventually run up to 90 frames per second. That's faster than most high-end console games like Call of Duty Warzone or Fortnite, which aim for a 60 frames per second standard. The Quest 2 is also lighter than the Quest 1, weighing about as much as a can of beans or a bottle of salad dressing. Even better, the controllers feel like hands, sitting perfectly in your palms. The combination makes it easy to move and eliminates a lot of the real-world tethers that could break VR's spell. People embrace VR because of its immersive traits. With most PC and console games, the user is a kind of puppeteer, manipulating the main characters with a mouse, keyboard, or controller. In VR, the best apps and games can put the user into the world as the star of their own action adventure. It makes you feel like a hero, even if you look like an idiot, like me. This is intense. There are downsides, but most, like sweat accumulating along the sides and straps of the headset, or a battery that taps out between two to three hours of use, are fairly negligible. And while there have been a number of improvements to try and mitigate feelings of motion sickness, even those not prone to it may still feel woozy after prolonged use. The Oculus app catalog isn't nearly as robust as traditional console or PCs, but there are a number of captivating titles that provide incredibly immersive experiences. Zombies will chase you in The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I have forgotten how much I enjoy the thrill of the brawl. You can wield a lightsaber and take part in an original Star Wars story with Vader Immortal. Or, if you just want to get outside the house while staying inside, try Wander, where you can type in pretty much any location in the world, teleport there, and move around. I wonder what that bookstore on Polk Street used to be. There are other apps that focus more on immersive experiences rather than action and motion, making them interesting options for people like my mom, who loves the beach but has been stuck at home due to the COVID pandemic. The biggest problem, and for some perhaps an insurmountable one, actually comes in the privacy department. Oculus is owned by Facebook, and you'll need to have a linked Facebook account to use the Oculus 2. Given Facebook's track records with personal data, and the Oculus's ability to capture a ton of personal data via audio, video, and motion sensors, that could be a big ask for people who prefer to keep their data private, even if you trust Facebook's use in handling of the data. The Oculus 2 is an amazing device that delivers the most immersive VR experience on the market. And if you own an appropriate smartphone, it also does so at an incomparable price. Altogether, the Quest 2 is the single best mass market VR device out there, period.